If you like a good movie and love a tasty treat, you could win one of three HD flat screen TVs. This is your chance to snack, watch, and win. Buy a three pack of Act Two popcorn or a 10 ounce Crunch and Munch, plus a Hershey's milk chocolate or cookies and cream bar. Write your name and number on the back of the receipt. Drop it off at Pritchard's, Robinson Road, or Caleb Bahamas Marathon Mall. Then order a movie from Rev TV On Demand, Channel 500, for your chance to snack, watch, and win. Enter today. Promotion ends August 30th. Tonight on NB12, hear what the Prime Minister has to say about recent allegations by the opposition leader. To have anything that implies that, to me, is bordering on gross stupidity. Members of the public weigh in on crime during last night's forum, which also saw a local talk show host given the boot. Cabinet ministers tour stage three of LPIA today, plus the Bahamas Pharmacy Conference a success. Those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Nikia DeVoe, and this is NB12. Joining us here at Cable 12 Studios, the free national movement has come under heavy fire following its recent assertion that Cuban detainees were in fact abused in the Bahamas. Today, Prime Minister Perry Christie raked the party's leader over the coals, warning his comments could have serious implications for the Bahamas. Christie called the FNM stance on the issue idiotic, insisting it is not for him to draw conclusions in a matter where people can be disciplined or even prosecuted. Bonnie Toot reports. Christie didn't mince words today as he slammed the Free National Movement over shocking allegations it made about the abuse of Cuban detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. He called comments made by FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis reckless, irresponsible, and bordering on stupidity. Minnis claimed on Wednesday that after seven detainees attempted to escape from the detention center on May 20th, they were severely beaten. However, Christie insisted today his government has nothing to hide. For them to say that Fred Mitchell or Perry Christie or Brave Davis committed acts of cruelty, right, or to have anything that implies that, to me, is bordering on gross stupidity. That's the first point I want to make. We do not sit as a government and as a country to bring about cruel acts on people. Minnis further alleged that after the beatings, detainees with help from one or more Defense Force officers then videotaped and reenacted the alleged incident. Christie says he chooses to wait until an investigation, currently being conducted by the police and defense forces, is complete before drawing conclusions, especially when it could lead to the prosecution of some people. We know that people complained of having some kind of duress, some kind of physical problem that took them to the hospital. So we know there is evidence of that. We know that there are allegations by Cubans of being beaten or being victimized, being assaulted, however one wants to describe it. It is not for me even though I am looking at information as it is coming out, to draw a conclusion where people can be prosecuted or people can be disciplined. When individuals make mistakes or apply unnecessary or excessive force, Christie says they will pay the penalty for such behavior. Governments, political organizations in themselves, do not do those things. Individuals do those things. And where individuals make mistakes, where they apply force, an, an unnecessary force or excessive force, then they have to pay the penalty for such things. But an investigation, I wish it had happened sooner, the investigation. I wish it was much more quickly executed because we are suffering as a result of it. But the fact of the matter is we will have a result. The Prime Minister says he fears the opposition leader's comments will give the international community the impression there is a division in the Bahamas on this controversial issue. It arms the people abroad who do not have access to the facilities, who have not had access to us, who have not asked us 
to give an explanation to them, but they have drawn a conclusion where being cruel. Christie could not say when that investigation would be complete and whether the findings would be made public. However, he suggested that National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage should address the media on the serious issue. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonnie Toot. Well, that's not the only issue Christie took with Minnis. The Prime Minister warned that he would ensure the FNM leader pays the political price for allegations he made about his relationship with controversial fashion designer Peter Nygaard in the House of Assembly. Those comments, which Minnis refused to withdraw, ultimately got him escorted out of the House and suspended for two sittings. And you asking me about what I think about him? But I'm, I'm just saying, no one had ever done it like that before. He knew he was wrong. He's suspended from Parliament for two sittings for it. But I don't want him to apologize. I'm going to ensure that he, the price he pays is a political one and the right one. Well, on to other news tonight. A man is in police custody after, get this, allegedly stabbing his mother. The 24-year-old reportedly stabbed his mother in her shoulder and thigh during an argument. Now, police say the 41-year-old woman and her son got into a disagreement that turned violent just before 8 last night at their Coral Harbor residence. The woman was taken to hospital and is reportedly in stable condition. Police are investigating. A public appeal from police yesterday for information on 15 wanted murder suspects is already showing results. Two wanted suspects featured at a press conference at CDU on Thursday have surrendered to police. William Etienne, who is one of the suspects wanted for questioning in the recent double homicide that occurred at a club at Wolf Road and Collins Avenue, turned himself in to officers at the Central Detective Unit late yesterday afternoon. Charlvin Larimore, who is wanted for questioning in connection with the murder of Tarek Stewart that occurred at a club on Bay and Armstrong Streets, turned himself in at CDU on Grand Bahama late Thursday afternoon. Hundreds of people turned up for last night's highly anticipated Operation Ceasefire Crime Forum that was held at St. Joseph's Community Center on Boyd Road. The panel of law enforcement chiefs heard testimonials from families of crime victims and suggestions from the public during the forum that at some points became heated. A Jasmine Bonamy was there and filed this report. During that town meeting that lasted more than three hours, top brass from across the country listened in to concerned citizens as they voiced their concerns about national security in the country. The forum was designed to allow members of the public to air their concerns about the escalating crime rate and to contribute suggestions for better crime fighting. Suggestions flowed steadily from both sides of the room for the entire forum with some calling for more jobs to be created and greater focus to be placed on young people before they go astray. Others voiced their concerns over the influx of illegal immigrants and insisted laws needed to be enforced to deter criminals. The next thing that I like to suggest is canine dogs, all right, that's trained to smell for guns. It's ridiculous that we have roadblocks with just officers standing around the cars, all right? We know our number one problem is gun-related crimes. Have the, gun, the dogs that can smell for guns around the cars. Put them at the ports of entry. It will reduce the amount of guns coming into the country. We need to revisit the bail act. We need to send a stronger message to the would-be criminals than you are presently sending. With the removal of the capital punishment, we need to find another way to say to persons, if you commit the crime, you will go to jail. Let's find ways to build collaborations between our community our uh, defense and our university systems. But the forum took an emotional turn midway through when a member of the disabled community stood up and insisted he was treated poorly by officers who were not trained to deal with the disabled. I want to make a suggestion to you to train your police officers. Really come to, to disable because some of our disabled, they are deaf. They can't speak. 
mother. We are a part of this society. It was a point that Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade said he agreed with. Greenslade pledged to implement training within the police training college immediately. I heard him. I heard him. Uh, and this is one time I'm on his side before I even investigate. Uh, I, I got a little perception. I'm going to ensure he can hear me. Commissioner is going to come see you one on one personally and we can sort your matter out for you. Meantime, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says his ministry will report back to the public in the next 30 to 60 days on what it plans to do with those suggestions. This, will, this is just the first of a series of these encounters. Um, we intend to go to Grand Bahama as uh, we were requested, but we also intend to go into other communities in New Providence. Um, I am firmly convinced that if we get cooperation between the general public and ourselves, we can make a positive impact on the incidence of crime and on the fear of crime. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Well, the evening's most heated point came early with the forced removal of talk show host Ortland Bodie Jr., who after spending more than two minutes complimenting panelists on organizing the event, refused to stop speaking despite prompting from host Julian Reed. Police officers escorted Bodie out of the building after this exchange between Reed and Bodie. And I hope he will come on Real Talk Live soon. Mr. Bodie, I know they appreciate your compliments, yeah, yeah, but that's please. Let's hold on. This Real Talk Let's Live get to here. it. Come on. This Real Talk come Live. Come on, man. You're allowed to man to talk for your two hours. Your radio showing now. on now. No, Let's the show go. is on. on. The show is on. Live on the Living Colors. Get to you it, You ask please. me my comments, let me make the comments. No cutting around here. Hey. That's the deal. I want to say. I run this one. We can cut I, your mic, you I, know, I, if you don't get to it. Man, you threatening me? No, I'm, I'm telling you. You threatened me. Not at all, I'm telling you. You are on my show, and you talk for two hours. Now I'm here for five minutes, and I can't talk. Catch yourself, my brother. What? Catch get, yourself. Get to the point, please, Mr. Bodie. Yeah, let me get to the point, but don't dare cut me. Don't do that. That's, that's rude. You invited me to speak, let me speak. They better talk just now for two hours. Minister Norwich, the initiative is a good one. I compliment you and the government on this initiative. But I find umbrage to my colleague in the media to tell me get to the point. When he was on the outside looking in, I invited him on Real Talk Live. Now he's back in the saddle. Uh, I tell him he cut. Person. We're going to the next talk. Uh, uh it was at that point that Bodhi's mic was cut, but he continued shouting, trying to get his point across. Moments later, several senior police officers approached Bodhi, asking him to leave the room. After refusing several times, Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Seymour forcibly removed the talk show host from the room as some members of the audience cheered. Just outside the community center, Bodhi continued to angrily shout, insisting he was not being treated fairly. So I can't go back in the public hall. Why? Oh, I cry shame on Stephen Seymour. What do you want to say? Let me get to the mic. And the commission police didn't even defend me. <laughs> and the on battle said nothing. I cry shame on this government. I cry shame on the police. They are complicit in duplicity. It's wrong. I mean, see, see Morgan escort me outside of a public meeting. Now, Bodhi also said he believed he did nothing wrong. After spending several minutes cooling down, the talk show host was allowed back inside for the remainder of the forum.